Right, welcome to part five. We're going to model the uh, the hatches. So just start as usual with um, the cylinder, the primitive cylinder. Scale it down. We have our uh, segments. H divide set to 32. So we'll just get it roughly into place. With our drawing, I'm not going to be following these um, the reference exactly. I'm just kind of using it as a guide, and then you start to just improvise and. Um, you know, kind of design it sort of as you go. It doesn't have to be exact. So, what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, getting a rough idea of the placement of those parts. Add in a couple of loops there. And if this is you know, a part like this you want to plan out. Um, so. You, you really want to plan it sort of you can do it as you go but plan it in advance a little bit you know um, the sort of procedure you're going to use um, when using Q-Mesh as well you want to sort of um, takes a bit of getting used to how it's going to work and it's it's dependent on you know the topology so um, you just the more you, you mess with it mess around with it the more you begin to understand uh, how, how it works um, it, all, it needs support and topology around it in order to behave kind of the way you might expect it. So I'm just, um, you can see there, you have to sometimes you have to just fiddle about with it. So I'm just pulling those in and pulling them back out again so I can get that um, that small chamfer I have it set to a one tenth step. So when you extrude out, it'll step out rather than just come out. You can set it to different settings half step, full step. Yeah, so just alt click down and Q mesh them down and Q mesh them down and see the way I, I Q mesh that middle part down for so there's a supporting edge on the back so Q mesh would work there in that case now we'll just uh, I'm gonna bring this up into position and I'm going to use a scale, scale edge loop complete, just to give us that uh, flare now at the end. And then just do the same with that one, kind of eyeball the, the slope that you need. So I'm just going to select them again and Q mesh them up, hold and uh, shift so it changes to move, just to flatten that out there where we cut those sections out and then just bring it down using Q mesh again uh, polygroup island so you can see here now I'm, I'm going to be using creasing for nearly all this stuff here rather than uh, support and edges so I'm just checking my crease tolerance and I'm going to set that uh, smooth subdiv div sub div in the crease settings very important so say for instance um, that's it. by default I think it's set to 15 so that means it'll only smooth um, after 15 levels of subdivision so if you bring that down to say 2 and set your, your model or bring it to 3 and set your model to 4 it'll give you a nice um, kind of a rounded off edge rather than the, the harsh sharp uh, edge that crease gives you by default so it's, um, it's a very handy way to model here um, using creasing because you can put a squares um, you know square extrusions and insets um, and chunks taken out of it into round shapes like this a perfect example whereas doing this um, using subdivision modeling um, would be a lot more difficult and the results wouldn't be wouldn't be as clean so I've just extruded out some square shapes and now I'm just man manually moving them into position there with good old friend there the transpose move and just a bit of clipping there clipping works nicely for um, simple geometry um, but it can tend to mess up your topology um, if it's a bit more complex and um, we have to it's, it's something to play around with as well to understand how, how it's working at the, these low re, these low reses because it's just mashing all the geometry squashing it in so if it's simple geometry it's just going to really move it so just a bit more um, extruding some more uh, just moving around manually get stuff into position so 
so now that I kind of have the um, the basic design I want to place there, you can kind of just go around, and it's just a, a matter of playing around them, yeah, trial and error. What looks good, what doesn't look good, it's it's quick to just adjust things. Try something out. If it doesn't work, undo it and try something different. You can see here I'm having problems uh, insetting that face, and that's because I think it's something to do with creasing. And um, if it's creasing around it, it uh, won't allow you to inset. So um, I'm just using the uh, hovering over an edge there, and then using the crease, uh, crease edge command. That's just sliding that back. But but to give us uh, once we have our, our universal creasing and using the um, crease settings and the crease rollout under the geometry rollout, you can just use the uh, the crease tools within Z modeler then to um, go in and um, do specific creasing, more specific kind of creasing. So here, that's the crease tool there, and you can remove uh, the creases as well by just uh, alt clicking them. So I'm just removing them there in the flat surface where they're not needed, and just keep checking uh, and unchecking your subdivisions to see what way the crease is affecting it. So now we're just gonna um, bring them right up, and uh, I'm gonna clip it off. You see the topology is, is bad there. I should have slid those edges back. So um, I'm just going to do that now. Just uh, slide those verts, space them out, and then do the same thing. Just grab those faces, polygroup island, and just use the move tool. And then we can clip it off. And that will just give us a nice flat surface on top. And then just use the move tool to bring it back down again. Um, when I say the move tool, that's the Z modeler move tool where you can move uh, faces, edges, and verts. So just um, experiment, adding in a control edge there. See if it helps that bit there. Eventually I'll, I'll end up just creasing that right around. Um, because um, it, it looks a lot better with a sharp angle. and You don't get that... Um, those unsightly kind of bits in the corner there, where the curve is running into the into this uh, angle. So I'm just tweaking, tweaking, tweaking again. And here I'm just uh, I'm gonna add in some crease in there and, and see what it looks like. remove those um, creased edges that aren't needed. When you extrude a face that has crease and it's going to maintain that same creasing on the new uh, geometry. So it's just something to be to be mindful of. So inset that in. And I'll just Q-mesh it down. Just to give us a little uh, like a little tray for a few bits and pieces that I'm going to add in there with um, the insert mesh um, brushes. So I can see here, um, we need to add in. I need to add in some more crease in there. First, I try to add a support loop, but of course, it's not going to work. It's on the outside. So I'm just going to apply some creasing to those edges there. And that's that's done the job. So this workflow um, using creasing is um, I find it it's terrific. I, most of the stuff I've concentrated on modeling wise, um, the first series was was just to get people used to subdivision modeling, because um, you really need to understand subdivision modeling, because um, creasing is based on the same sort of. Uh, the same uh, fundamental kind of rules apply. It's just um, creasing is, is much more um, it's much more forgiving. Topology wise, it's always it's why it was kind of designed in the first place as an option. So it's a really really good option. And as I say, in conjunction with the uh, the, the crease subdiv level setting there, um, and the tolerance and the crease uh, settings, the main crease settings, um, 
and then our new all these Z modeler uh, crease tools with a uh, huge amount of control over creasing so it's definitely a workflow I'd, uh, I'd recommend um, experimenting with because I'm still um, I've been subdivision modeling <laughs> so many years that I'm, 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 my brain is almost um, stuck kind of in that mode whereas um, I really should be using creasing a lot more but I did think it was important in the early videos to, to show subdivision modeling because as I say it's it's pretty vital to understand so that in the inset I couldn't do it again with the creases so what I did there was I just Q meshed up scaled in the edges and uh, and just moved that face down to flatten it out it's, it's the same effect same result as insetting but um, it's just a, a long way around a walk around really because I couldn't it just wouldn't inset for me so instead of wasting time I just I just did uh, did it the um, that very old fashioned kind of way so I'm just testing out um, adding in some creasing just to get that nice sharp sharp look that I want there for that just uh, remove those ones there that I don't want and I was gonna remove them but I think I'll, I'll leave them in I prefer to have that sort of uh, sharp change where the sort for the angle changes so a little bit of manual tweaking again These are all like a lot of these. The likes of that would I just changed there. It's underneath and it's never ever ever going to be seen. But it's still good practice just to try and um, you know just to try and look out for these things. And keep things uh, you know rather than letting it get too messy, too out of hand. <coughs> so what I did there was I just uh, Q meshed off uh, that section there holding. Um, holding control broke it away and I hit it then and split hidden and uh, brought it into its own sub tool now I'm just using slice curve to get those exact cuts that we want and now shift control clicking to select all the bits from one half and now just hide the rest control W and control W again to make them their own poly groups now this now I'm gonna dynamesh this this part here. So you know you could you can do this this same procedure I'm about to do with the dynamesh um can be done by extracting uh, or panel loops or whatever but um because we're using Z modeler here in all these tutorials as usual I just thought I'd use I'd use Z modeler. So I have to break these away because as I'm trying to Q mesh them up um you know they're they're stuck together. Because they've Q meshed together, so it's no big deal. We just, um, before extruding them, we just pull one apart and then uh, just Q mesh it up then once and then just click to get the exact same thickness on the other one. And now I'm coming down and I'm going to crease and subdivide it enough times to get rid of the facet. And then I'm just going to dynamesh the whole thing at a million using Dynamesh Master. And then I'm going to use uh, Polish by Groups to smooth it off. And now I'm uh, decimating it. Just uh, I'm, I've duplicated it first and then decimated it so we can keep the original. We can always go back to the original. Um, and now I'm just going to um, see what I can get away with. Drop it down to 10%. Still looks good. And uh, you can see now how low poly it is there. And I'm going to um, copy that from that sub tool list and we paste it back into the original. And we up, or sorry, into the main, our main tool. And I'm just trying to. I'm using clip circle here to uh, just to get us a perfect circle again. But then I realise it's it's I've lost my nice kind of bevel there. So we'll undo that and. Uh, 
and not do it just copy that from from that sub tool list and the decimated version and paste it into our main tool Doing a bit of bit of renaming and paste that in there. So copy and paste is a new feature now in R7. It's, I found myself using it. it's really really handy. And you've loads of different sub tools bet between different t tools. So I'll just move this into position scale up eventually I'm gonna um, you'll see I'm gonna I wanted to change this so because there's no topology in the decimated version I end up going back to my original and changing changing that and bringing that back in and just deleting this decimated version so that's it's always always wise to duplicate your sub tools um, when you're about to do procedures like that so if anything goes wrong you can just uh, call on again or even save it out but duplicate it in your work session definitely Now I'm just using the um, the transpose scale, uniform scale there, just um, getting them into position. Now moving these around separately, I could have just merged them back into a sub tool, merged them into the into the one sub tool and moved them around together, but it's not it's no big deal, you know. So still um, just playing around. And what I've noticed is that it doesn't really read. The detail doesn't really read. So I'm not happy with it at all. So this is an example of never being afraid to just redo some of your work. You know, if if it looks all right, then it's not good enough. You, you know, you want to be you want to be really happy with it. So obviously here, I forgot that was decimated and it has no topology. So um, you you can't use masking. So I'm going to go back to the original here. Pull it apart, auto groups it, and just um, use a mask circle and just click on the mask loads of times to blur it out. And now I'm going to just pull that up, and that'll give us a nice uh, fall off there where it's moved to geometry. So I'm just moving it up slightly give it more of a rounded kind of look and I moved it apart so that the seam in the middle is more noticeable so I've just deleted the, the old uh, decimated version that I didn't want and um, duplicated that again the updated version and just uh, copy and paste it back in and then we'll just um, scale it into position scale it and move it into position get it roughly lined up and you know eyeball it with uh, transparency on so you just get a, a better kind of visual of what's going on and just leave it sitting up kind of proud and slightly smaller so it's just about getting getting those gaps where ambient occlusion or lighting um, is going to gather and just pop those details out when you're rendering so now I'm just um, I think I was going to um, I was going to do actually. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, creating this um, this attachment here. So I'm just insetting those polys and tagging them, bring them all up, queue mesh them up together, and I'm just kind of um, seeing how this looks as I go. I've no nothing in mind here for this. Just a kind of a um, a rough kind of idea what I might like. Let me just uh, 
Q-mesh these all out together and then Q-mesh in between each of the sort of fingers and just join them up to make them one uh, sort of continuous part and just uh, bring the ends out a bit with Q-mesh and then we'll all tag these and Q-mesh them out and now that uh, I, I came out too far there and the edges crossed over so I just brought it slightly in and uh, I didn't actually need to do that I could have just, I could, it's different poly groups so I could have just control clicked on the uh, poly group below so now I'm just using the slide just to space those edges out slide edge space those out and clip that off and now we can Q-mesh uh, poly group island checking it from different angles making sure it's not into pen penetrating with the, the lid from the hatch and a bit more Q-mesh in there just to s s stitch them together and that was just ha that just happened to still be on mask <laughs> mask circle so I'm changing back the mask rectangle here and sliding edge loop complete just making sure of all the right stuff masked out Just moving about, seeing if I can get the result they want. Not quite, so I end up just um, going in, grabbing the move tool, the small brush size, and just moving the vert. The move vert tool within Z Modeler that is. And now just using that universal creasing again, based on the, based on an angle threshold. So I set it to 30 there. So you want to play around with that. Most of the stuff for modeling here is 90 degree angles. So you could set it, you know, between 30 and 70 to get nearly, you know, 90% of the crease in there. And in some cases, 100% of it, depending on the model. So, the usual bit more tweaking. And now I'm just going um, to have to go in and have a look at the, uh, the creasing. Q mesh that bit out there in the corner just to kind of round it around there and then just start playing around with the creasing so hovering over an edge using crease and crease edge and just uh, clicking to add a crease and alt clicking to remove a crease so it's yeah it's a lot of experimentation um, and just jumping in and out of your um, from subdivided mode to uh, n to non smooth to pol just a poly regular polygon mode just so all sorts it's all visual stuff you know the whole idea of if it looks good it is good now obviously for certain types of production models and everything and you know f for UV and animation and all the rest um, Topology, generally topology has to be good anyway. Like, but you know, it's good practice. But the, um, the kind of the quad Nazis um, sometimes are a bit too uh, fervent in their zealousness. So you know, there's a time and a place for uh, for triangles. And it's not as bad as some people make out to have them on your models. You know, obviously, when you have ev continuous edge loops, it makes things easier. Um, you know, for UV and everything. But um, like if this is going to be turned into a game mesh, there's going to be triangles all over it anyway. So just still messing around with the, uh, the creasing. Trying to, you know, if there's any little uh, anomalies or pinching or anything like that, that look unsightly. I make sure just to uh, eradicate them. So I'm just going to um, space out some of these verts here using the vertex uh, slide tool in Z Modeler.
And if you're having problems, um, if you're having problems navigating um, around the canvas, if if uh, the pivot point on which the camera is kind of orbiting is all over the place, you can just uh, up in the right column there. You see that local button, and then you can just click anywhere in the model, and that'll um, that localize uh, the orbit pivot to where you clicked. So that's just a very um, very important feature to uh, to utilize on a piece like this. That's um, you know it's all loads of different parts that are all off the uh, off the world origin. So in other words, they're not kind of in the place where they're created by default. Uh, by ZBrush. So I'll just mirror and weld in them these sections here that we did just something that didn't do earlier on, just to kind of get more of an idea of the look. You don't have to do all this until the very end, but it's just to get an idea of the look. And that is the front uh, hatch on that side done. So next we're going to move on to um, the other hatch beside it. So again, I'm just going to get a rough uh, idea from from the reference here. So I'm just adding in a couple of uh, couple of edge loops to get the center of our, our circle, and then we'll use the split tool. No, I, sh I should have um, before I did that. I should have. Um, well, I didn't have to, but I probably should have. Um, you know, inset those faces, and then. So here I'm just because the circle was overlapping on that edge. I'm just gonna have to um, space these out. So, just using the um, the move vertex tool, I'm just gonna move some of them across to uh, give us that bit of room we need to create this circle. As I was saying, I've inset this um, almost up to the edge, so there's no support edge uh, running around the outside of it. So I probably should have just inset those faces first and then used the split tool, but it didn't really matter in the end. So I've used the uh, um, the insert half cylinder uh, brush there. It's just a quick way to get them. Um, rather than trying to walk off that topology that's there, I wanted more topology for this hatch I'm going to create. I'll just keep it separate from the uh, from the hull. So th this part here, I didn't really. I just kind of very roughly or loosely based it on the. Uh, the underlying reference and I just kind of just make the decisions yourself whatever you think looks good and um, it's just a matter of uh, you know extruding parts um, extruding parts inwards uh, cutting out little sort of cutting out sections raising small sections it's all um, you know stuff just decisions that you can kind of make on the fly as you're creating it don't like it, control Z. You know, it's all quick stuff to do. And you can get fairly, you know, fairly complex looking stuff. Really easy. And because I have um this half cylinder the default, I think it was thirty two uh H divide, it's worked out pretty perfectly here as well. So as I say I'm just kinda loosely loosely following this but it still gives us an idea it gives us a couple of ideas to get going see I'm trying out something here I didn't like it so I'll just control Z control Z and as I say just experimenting here pulling bits in pulling bits out so the main tools we're using here are just uh, um, insert edge loop um, and then just Q mesh for extruding up and down and that's the extrude edge tool there we can just drag out from an edge I don't use that too often but it can come in handy sometimes same thing again here so
one extrusion up, one extrusion down after adding, adding in an edge loop. Now I'm just seeing, um, you can see where that actually lined up nicely, the default uh, segments on the insert uh, half cylinder brush. So the insert brushes are, are can actually be very handy, you know, to get you going and things quickly, or just adding little details so you're not sitting there, you know, for too long, you know, rebuilding the same things over and over again. It's they can be very very useful, and something as well that I've only really because I've done, always done most of me modelling. Well, in fact, I have always done all me, all me modelling in 3D Max, except for when I wanted to sculpt things and bring them into ZBrush. But now, you know, I can see myself uh, using ZBrush more and more and more for even these kind of modelling tasks. Even though Max has incredible modelling tools, it's just nice to be able to sort of just stay in ZBrush and not have to keep jumping in and out of different packages and um, go Z can be a bit annoying with the scale differences between Max and ZBrush so you know then you're exporting and OBJ importing it and all that nonsense it's it's nice to be able to just stay in the one place so just um, trying a few things out that aren't working out for me so just move on to the next bit so I've decided just to bring those bits up <coughs> give us those little kind of cutouts on the inside which just look pretty good so I just need to make sure now that um, we add in our creasing I'm just going to manually crease that with the, the crease edge till And just checking again. And just kind of grabbing a couple of faces here and there. And trying to, you know, so it's not all perfectly symmetrical. We have a couple of different um, extrudes offset. So this is just the extra creasing that's needed. Originally this was subdivided using the Q grid, but because I've cut that circle out now, I've, I've, I've changed it just to um, dynamic subdivision without Q grid. And I just added in some creases then. So that's all we had to do there. So you can chop and change between your different uh, subdivision methods. That's uh, pretty much dead. So now I'm just using um, some of those insert brushes just to add in a couple of details in the back here. As I say, there's no point building all these bits and pieces from scratch you know if you're a beginner or whatever it's, it's you might want to build them all just for the practice um, you know I, I, I'm well able to model so I don't see it as cheating really for me to use insert brushes to create simple geometry like this so um, so it's no harm in using there's that UVR if you get that um, just come down and UV roll out and just delete UV so just uh, modifying the insert push slightly just to um, give us a bit, a bit of a different look than the came in as and just trying out some different these are all default kind of brushes that are in Z brush So these are only they're tiny little sort of details, so it doesn't it doesn't matter hugely, you know. I don't think anybody's gonna see that <laughs> from the distance of the render and, and start uh, giving out shite because they recognised what insert brush it was from. So 
so that one there is the uh, bad king um 3d creation kit i think number one so that's um it's pretty good one as well for uh you can always modify all these shapes bring them in and then modify them stretch them around extrude bits out and the topology on, on that isn't great but um on a lot of those um a lot of insert pushes you might download off the internet the topology would be all triangulated so it won't be great for um for a lot of uh, a lot of things for subdividing around like that but here you know i was going to add some control edges and it wasn't working out for me because the topology isn't great as i said so i'm just going to um put a universal crease on it um, set the tolerance to 30 and that's it there it's, that's that's grand and i think that is that yeah that's the hatch is pretty much created so i've added a couple of extra bits um off camera here just uh, modified a few bits and changed a few bits around bit a bit of tweaking you know nothing too crazy just uh, all the same sort of stuff we've been doing so um this little cut out here and just modified this section so if you solder that out you can just see it just and an extra little cut out there and a little bit kind of added up on the top there another little extrusion and a couple on the front just to give it a bit more visual interest um and the hatches might have just modified one or two little bits um and at the back here you can see these inset panels um i've used the insert mesh brushes and they're really really nice insert mesh brushes of a video there um you can see them here there's five of them loads and lo hundreds of parts in the five brushes so a uh, bloke called uh wayne johnson or wayne jones i think his name is jedi law had a uh, death star agreeable packs five 3d max scenes um for free freely available for download and i converted them all into uh, insert multi mesh brushes from max to zebrush of a video on, on that process but uh they're really uh terrific kind of models in those packs they're so detailed as well like this kind of micro detailing on them um and this is just a couple of different ones you know three or four of them just uh mashed in together and moved around and modified a little bit just to give an effect i think it gives a nice kind of effect it's very detailed and simple to create like there's no point in spending a huge amount of time for me modeling all that stuff um small sort of details we can use those insert multi mesh brushes um and you know it's going to give you as i say it's a lot of this stuff takes so much time that you, you want to just get it out there and, and um why not use these insert multi mesh brushes if they're going to save you time? Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, for the extra bits and pieces added on, I just um, what I did with those actually was uh, I split them into their own sub tool, and because the topology um, comes in all triangulated and everything, I uh, and there's round bits on it as well. I I used um, crease and I just universally creased them using the same methods I showed earlier on and then just uh, used the kind of regular uh, dynamics uh, subdiv sub so in the next part now we're going to create the uh, these bay doors on the top and um, you can see them on the drawing there this uh, this rhino can be built as a kind of a modular variant sort of a thing so we can build these bay doors uh, hinged doors with this sci-fi sort of cutout down the middle and then we can also build them um, like a mount a weapons mount kind of a small platform that obviously won't have the hinges that are cut down the middle and then um you can just uh and then i might as a bonus kind of video maybe create a uh, twin heavy bolters uh turret sort of mounted weapon that we can put onto the variant um, version of it so we can just have the basic um troop carrying version and then you can have the the version with the weapons and then you could make any amount of weapons you wanted to and um and stick them on and, and you know missile launchers las cannons whatever any kind of any kind of weapons and really change up the look or just bolt on different bits and bobs and customize it to your liking 
Um, so we'll do that in the next part, part six. Um, create those, the doors and the weapons mount. And that should be it for this part. Uh, I'll see us in the next part. Alright then. Cheers. Thanks. Good luck.